Okay, hello and welcome to the next episode of Let's Talk Brand. Uh, this is the first in Poland uh, series of video interviews with uh, world-class branding uh, expert. And today it's my great honor to interview David uh, Breyer, award-winning branding authority and best-selling author of amazing uh, book, Brand uh, Intervention. Intervention, okay, sorry for that. Uh, 33 steps to transform the brand you have into the brand you need. And for me, this is absolutely must read and mind setting uh, book and uh, unique not only in terms of content, but also in terms of uh, design, uh, because it, it, this book shows how it should be done. So it's absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, uh, I've read it um, twice um, because I, I got it on my, <laughs> a month ago and it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, so welcome to the podcast, um, David. And actually I should welcome you to Poland. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm glad and I, for me to all those that are listening in, in Poland, Hello. It is cold here too. I understand it's cold there. We have some snow. And it sounds like you have more, but hello. I'm glad to be here. Okay. But today, unsurprisingly, I would like to um, talk about branding. Um, and I, I do really like to start with some definitions. So if you could say, what's your definition of branding? Sure. So and I'll give you, before I tell you my definition of branding, I'll just give you a, a little backstory on how I came to it, which was when I was putting together brand intervention, I brand, you know, brand and branding, that was something that just started to become more and more common to the point where when I first started to write my book, I went onto Amazon, I typed in branding, searched under books, and I had over 6,500, 6,500 books on branding, okay? Not 300, not 500, not 1,000, 6,500. More recently, I did the same thing. It's now well over 10,000 books. So if you and I were to read one of those a day, each day, it would take us over 24 years to read. Right. So, you know, so one thing I know, having been in the business for 40 years, for four decades, is that when there's a lot of opinions and a lot of um, ideas and this idea, this philosophy, that approach, da, 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 there's something fundamental and that's missing. And that's what I found. And that's how I came to the definition that I found, which is four words, not 10,000 books. Four words, the art of differentiation. That is that is what I find because the job of anything is to open people's minds, open people's eyes, open people's hearts. And you do that through differentiation. You don't do that through sounding like everything else. You don't do that through looking like the 20, 40, 50, 100, 200 th things that came before you. So the best brands, the best leaders, the best artists, the best writers, the best mu movies, they all actually adhere to the factor of they have properly differentiated themselves in the market. Okay, so but what does it really mean uh, to be uh, different? And what is the best differentiator? And at the end of last year, uh, a Polish shoe company introduced... Um, a service of delivering um, shoes in 60 minutes uh, from order to the customer's door. And this creates uh, a new expectation, the whole category, and it's game changing. But uh, you can always be better. You can always be faster, smarter than your competitors. And that creates great customer experience, of course. But sooner or later, everyone is as fast and as good uh, as the others. And the game starts again. Uh, so how to find the uh, right differentiator? Uh, or maybe what are the most powerful ways um, uh, to differentiate a brand? Well, there's a few aspects to what you're asking. So one is, is that no brand 
ever stays still. No industry ever stays still. No customer needs ever stay still. So the, the, there's the idea that, okay, we've got our differentiator and that's it. And it's never going to evolve and it's never going to change and it's never going to pivot is not true. So the thing is, is what you need to do, what's vitally important, you must, the best brands in the world are connected to something timeless. That's, that's resident in here for us as people, not a better list of features, right? Like you said, and companies, oh, they see one company doing this, they're going to do their version of it. They see another company doing it, they're going to do their version. So you have to be connected to something that is timeless. Like, for example, like we all know Apple as a brand. Well, Apple was the first brand in technology that raised the game. It made it about people. It made it about discovery. It made it about creativity. And it raised it to a, a level of art, the way they presented and everything like that. They were the first. So now when we see Samsung and we see Verizon and we see Microsoft and we see all these brands do Apple, it's like, I don't know. I, I mean, I know when I see them, I think, oh, okay, they're doing their version of Apple, right? Because Apple owns that because it's true to what they are about. Innovation is about timelessness. For example, I mean, specifically, like when the Steve Jobs came back to Apple, he didn't say, okay, we're going to come out better operating system. No, he came out with the think different campaign. And if those of you, if the, if your listeners right now are not aware of it, I would just simply go to YouTube and, and let's search or think different campaign. It's about a two minute uh, commercial black and white, but you'll notice it connected to something timeless, which was rebelliousness, not being satisfied with the status quo, right? How, how are you going to out feature that? Right. You can't out feature. It's like, so they connected to that timeless thing. Same thing with Nike. Nike didn't say better sneakers, better rubber, better synthetic material. No, they were like, no, just do it and gave you stories that connected to this timeless thing. We as consumers, we as as those who can advocate and embrace a brand are are more timeless. We're not finite. We're not defined by a set of features you know, or a set of deliverables. So if we're, if we're connected to that bigger thing, that's how you actually use it. Okay, so I, I, want, to, I want to understand it. So, so, so something like brand purpose or the values or the beliefs, this is something which is timeless, but, you, but uh, the way you differentiate can, can change uh, because of, I don't know, because of the situation or the, or the, I don't know, because of the pandemic last year. That's, right, that changed a lot. Right. It's, it's yeah. I mean, well, that's that is correct. That's absolutely correct. So the thing, the thing that happens is, you're going to, if you're connected to those values that are here, if you're connected to something that's 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 tr that's true and lasting. Like for, I'll, I'll give you another example, because if you're connected to the right timeless thing, you can pivot really well and very organically. Perfect example is a blockbuster video or versus Netflix. Blockbuster video was connected to, we are a brick and mortar store. We will have locations. People will have to come to us and rent, and they will, they'll rent our you know, VHS or DVD, and they'll buy popcorn and licorice and whatever. And they, but they were married to that. That wasn't timeless. Netflix, on the other hand, started out as what? DVD by mail. But they didn't, that's not where they stopped. What were they really connected to? They realized, oh, we're a, we are here to provide entertainment. We're here to entertain people. Now, if you're there to entertain people, you can pivot from DVD by mail to digital streaming to creating original content. They're the top producer of original content in the world over Disney. OK, they spend more billions of dollars in actually producing. Or so it's like, what were they married to? They were married to the right thing. That timeless thing was entertainment, not how the entertainment is delivered. See, that's the difference. It's like one is 
the how and one is stuck, you know, like, like you can have a restaurant that might be, well, we're going to be about a certain, uh, a certain type of food and a certain type of this and a certain type of that, or we could be married to deliciousness. Okay. So, uh, as long as you entertain people, you can do just anything as long as you entertain. You can pivot. You can... There may, 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 maybe, maybe someone will insert a little chip in my, in my hand and I go, boop, oh, there's the latest movies right there on my wrist. You know what I mean? I mean, so like, but if I'm connected to entertainment, it doesn't matter if it's something that's a little, if it's on my watch, if it's on my phone, if it's in the water that I drink, doesn't matter because entertainment is the overarching thing. And just like with Apple, it was, it was not being satisfied with the status quo, right? Okay. That was the timeless thing. Okay, but what I think is that it's easy to say, but it's not so easy to do. Uh, because when you are an entrepreneur and uh, want to do something yourself, especially when you are a small company, and um, uh, then you get, as you said, uh, 10,000 books on Amazon about branding. You get a lot of theories, concepts, um, definitions that differ from each other and are, are not easy to understand and apply. Uh, so you are confused at the end of the day. And um, what would be your recipe um, for standing out on this overcrowded market and how to create um, exceptional brand? How could the first, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to look at the noise level. Not what every. Mean? What does it mean? Well, not at well. The, the, for example, I, I I don't know. Like you tell me, like in America, like there's a very one very noisy caric, uh, category are energy bars, little protein bars. Okay. Do you do you have do you have a lot of those in in yes. Poland? Okay. So the thing is, is so that's like, so like it used to be in the supermarket or, or where you would buy them, it was a little small space. Now it's like, you know, really long. It's like thousands of protein bars, meal replacements, um, healthy snack type of things when you're on the go. So like you have to look at, that's what I mean by noisy. That's very noisy. Okay. Breakfast cereals. Very noisy. Uh, Skin care, very noisy. Okay, even even uh, even you know like phones. Like what what phone? It's it's quite noisy. Now there's a few. There's still the upper. There's the the top echelon, and then there's the ones that want to be top, and then there's the all the rest. And so that's what I mean by noisy. So you have to look at well, what's the noise level because the best thing you can do is where can we go where it's not as noisy or how do we redefine the category or introduce a new category so that we're dealing in a less, it's going to be impossible if you're a new company or a a younger company or a startup and, uh, or even a company or even an older company that's needing to reinvent itself. You might be okay. Well, we're going to come out. We're going to say we're better. Everyone's going to say they're better. You're never going to win. You're never, you, you, that's, that is the recipe for losing. You want to know the recipe for losing? Say we're better. We're smarter. We're this or we're that or you, anything with ER at the end, blah, 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 or, or, or faster, thinner, smaller, uh, whatever, right? That's, that's because someone's going to always be able to outdo you. And then the other, the other, so that's the, that's kind of like what I call, that's the race to the, to the top. Oh, we're going to be more, that's not timeless. That's not connecting to values. And then the other failing solu- uh, approach would be, oh, we're going to be cheaper. We're going to under, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to be a little bit less. Well, then someone else can come in and just then do a little bit less than you. So now you keep dwindling away at margins. That's not adding value. There needs to be a clear understanding the difference between value and price. Price is the number that goes on it. Value is what the person gets out of it. That's why people are willing to pay premium dollars for premium products because they feel they're going to get more at every point. And the best brands have more sort of future 
this is the way I talk about it. The best brands have more future built into them than brands that are not so great. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that it almost anticipates, oh, wow, I can do that with it. Ooh, when I, you know, if I'm driving a car, ooh, when I do that, this is what happens. Or when, I, or when the lights, the, when the, the certain things happen, this is what happens. I mean, I mean, my, my vehicle, it's like I've got, I've got you know, the, the steering, steering wheel warms up. I like that. If I put something in the back seat, it reminds me, it says, by the way, you put, when I'm leaving, by the way, don't forget, you put something in the back seat. That's cool. That's what I mean by future. The best brands will provide that kind of customer experience where it anticipates, right? And it's kind of like, and you can even take a look at something as simple as Amazon, where you go, okay, Amazon. So they, what, what do they do? It's like, it's very functional. I don't think it's amazingly designed, but from a user experience, it has a lot of pluses, right? It has how many stars? User experience. Instant, I get like, what have other people experienced? Oh, other similar items that other people have bought. Okay. So it's, it's, it's anticipating where I might go built into, and it has one click. Oh, I like this. Bang. One click. I'm out of there. Right. So it anticipates, it makes it easy. I don't have to go, okay, add to cart, click to the next page, do that. Oh, the next page. So I got to go at three, four links. Oh, wow. That took a whole minute and a half. Oh, I hate this company. Right. <laughs> you know, so. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but I still, I'm still not sure if an entrepreneur or just a person who wants to build the brand and start the company um, um, can do this without any help from the outside, from the from the experts, from the authorities, from the agencies. I think it, it, it requires a lot of training to do this well. Well, I would say I would say you're right. Some entrepreneurs are very good at looking at the world through their customers' eyes. And they have the ability to be impartial. Many do not. They love their product. They love their service. It's beautiful. I call it the, I call it the beautiful baby syndrome. It's like and they and they love social media and they just push and push. <laughs> oh yeah, they love it. They love it. They love it. And so the thing is, so you know, it's like it's oh oh, isn't my baby beautiful? And, I, and you know, and I'm like, eh. if it wasn't for that third eye and 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 those the extra set of ears, you know, so it's a baby, yeah, you know, that's, it's the baby, that's the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. And so and and so that's you know, I, that's a very common conversation with clients where I say, you know what. Um, and so it's my job. It's, it's a conversation I have all the time. Okay. Is that really, is that really great? Oh yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Amazing. 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 And I'm looking at him going, oh, it's not so amazing. It's not so amazing. And so, yeah, you know, and so I'm, I'm going, let me ask you something. How does this come? And here's a question I very commonly will ask. I'll say, let me ask you, after they've told me how great and amazing, terrific everything is, I would then say, if I went to your competitors right now, would they, wouldn't they be telling me pretty much the same thing you've just told me? And that's at the point when they start to go, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't ask. No, notice, I don't say... Now, how does that really compare to your competitors? I don't, I'm not asking because then it, then it falls into their opinion and if, it just gives them an opportunity to show me their beautiful baby again. I'm not interested in being shown their beautiful baby again. I'm like, let me ask you something. Because that gets them to look at what? The noise I was talking about earlier. That's the noise, right? Because they're going to say, competitors are going to say, well, we're the best. We're the oldest. We're the smartest. We're the most caring. We're the most knowledgeable. They're going to say all the same things for, for whether it's true or untrue. I put that aside. Whether it's true or untrue, we're going to put that aside. We're talking about perception. We're talking about noise, messaging, and that's the thing. Now, you know, fortunately, I'm, you know, and I ask my clients, I say, look, is this really the best? Now that we've, now that we've kind of 
looked at the reality of what people are hearing. Tell me, is it really? Well, you know, uh, you know, on a scale of one to ten, what is it? Okay. Fortunately, I'm, I'm, I've been lucky that more of my clients have actually had. Well, this is where it is. Occasionally, I will have a client says, "Eh, it's kind of the same as everybody else. It's, it's not really any different." So we have to get smart. We have to get uh, inventive and figure out how can this be better. What more can we do? I'm not talking about saying something that's untrue or, 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 you know, being a bit lying and all altering or embellishing. I'm simply talking about then let's, we need to get inventive because I, it's the job. It's the job of every company to turn the ordinary into extraordinary. It's the job of every, every brand to do that. And if you don't have that mindset, you, I don't think that you are set up for success. Okay, so I, I'm pretty sure that my entrepreneurs like marketing because branding is much harder. It's much more difficult. It requires a lot of training and everyday exercise in seeing and so on and so on. It's much easier to have a good quality product and just to push it, <laughs> to use social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, you've said about um, um, okay, maybe maybe other way. Uh, that's a, that's quite a, that's. Clever typography here. There is an yes. intervention, and there is um, also word um, invention. Yes. And uh, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, the basic the basic thing is, I mean, one is is is. I think that there's a lot of lazy approaches. Okay. We've always done it this way. Oh. That's what the big company is doing. Let's copy them. Like the example I gave before. It's like there's still companies. There's still Microsoft and Samsung, which are copying Apple. Apple was the first. It's like, and I see those others. Okay. They're, they're, they're just doing their version of Apple. They never found their own voice. Right? So, um, so the thing is, is that, you know, one has to get unlazy. One has to demand more of oneself. One has to be attentive. So that's why the brand intervention and brand invention, those two things belong together because if you're not going to disrupt and be willing to challenge the norm, then you're not, in, in my experience, you're not really an entrepreneur. You have to be willing to challenge the norm. Even if you are the one setting up the norm, you might be the one like, hey, we're the industry standard. Everyone looks to us. We're the industry standard. Well, good. Well, then realize you are now the norm. And if you are not ready to now become your own worst com competition and raise the bar for the new norm, then someone else is going to do it for you. So that's what I mean. But that's why brand intervention and brand invention really belong together. Uh, okay, so what are the signals that um, mm, for you that you that you need to start thinking about about rebranding? Um, and um, I think, as you call it, uh, you should think about brand intervention um, because I think this is similar to rebranding. So, what are the signals when you are on the market that you should think about this? Well, if people confuse what you're doing. Like if, let's say you've been in business for 20, 30, 40, 50 years as a company and people are only remember what you used to do 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Now, so we know, we already know the world doesn't stay the same world that doesn't, doesn't stay at play. It changes, cultural changes, technological changes, different shifts. So if people only knew what you did 10 or 20 years ago and they have no idea what you're doing now, and that you're evolving and changing, that's one, one red flag. Another is that you've been pigeonholed, and by pigeon, like meaning like you're, you're, they, they put a label on you. Oh, they're a, they're a blah, blah, you know, they're an XYZ company, whatever that is, right? They put a label on you, and they only know you as that. That's a problem, because you're not, you're not telling the industry, you're not telling the market your story, so the market's deciding your story for you. So you, you have to always be um, the narrator of your story. That's, that's another. 
Um, another is that when a lot of players start start populating and crowding the space, that's when the no noise level starts getting high. You need to be very attentive. Ooh, if it's starting to get high, you need to really always be very attentive and sharpen what you're about, why you're relevant, what your values are, and not be misled. You don't want to be misled by, oh, they said they have 10 good reasons. Well, then we're going to go with 12 good reasons. You know what I mean? You don't want to fall for that. That's not, a, that's not the real battle. That's that's a that's a that's an easy distraction, and you know, and you can fall for that, and don't fall for that. Okay, so what has really changed uh, last year? What are the new ways for the companies um, because of the pandemic pandemic year? So, what, what, ask me the first question again. There was a, there was something. It was well, one part. What's really, what's really changed last year uh, because of the pandemic uh, situation all over well, the world? Well, um, so a lot, uh, you know, some some companies really thought, oh, if we can't if we can't have people come to us in a store, or we can't go to them in terms of sales. Uh, so whether it's B to B or B to C, doesn't matter. That that we can't engage, we can't add the same value. That's false. That's false. Um, It's just not. It's just not true. I mean, and, and actually, a great example: Gary Vaynerchuk. It was a very interesting conversation he had had with someone that had that has a, a a store where they sell audio equipment. So you're dealing with speakers, you know, like different stuff. And they're like, "Oh, well, we just can't get people in. We can't get people in. Da, 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 it's really a problem." Blah blah blah. Pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. I said, "Well," he said. Look, look at what I did with Wine Library. You know, he had Wine Library. What was he doing? He was doing a daily wine review. You could not taste it, right? It's all on YouTube. You're not tasting it. You're not smelling it. You're not looking at the bottom. He's a, it's, you're doing it through him. So he added the whole value of white glove uh, service being your eyes and ears for you, and they exploded. Right. And so he said, look, you can do a similar thing, even though they're going to be hearing it through their computer or they're going to be hearing it through their phone or they're going to be here. They, they're going to be learning through your eyes and your mind. So that's one thing. I think that there's that, that people need to be very ingenious right now. Uh, certain industries like obviously hospitality and um, and you know, restaurant, basically restaurants, hotels, etc. Those have been hit very, very hard. Tourism has been hit enormously hard. Um, but you have to get inventive. To me, you, one would create virtual tours. One would give access to places they normally couldn't have access to. It's like the bottom line is, you know, it's kind of like I, I gave I gave an example because I did actually speak with a number of people in the hospitality space in Europe and Asia and America earlier this year, about April, I think. And I said, look at what some companies, restaurants have already done. Some restaurants have gone, well, we can't we can't continue to do business because um, we can't have people come into our restaurant. And I'm like, who made up that rule? Look at that. Who made up the rule that only eating in was where your revenue stream was? You still have the kitchen. You still have the chef. You still have all, and you still have the ingredients. You still have all of that. So now, so some made it, oh, okay, we'll make it. And we can now actually, you can come and you can pick it up, right? And so now it's not only limited to our space. But now it's actually, we've now expanded and extended it to the sidewalk. Sometimes people can eat out. Sometimes they can't. Or the people can take it and bring it home. Okay. Sometimes we can actually even deliver it. There's even a hotel I saw last night. There's a hotel because they weren't, no, people were not going to their hotel. They actually converted hotel rooms. They first started with four. They had converted those into little private little eating areas so the restaurant 
So they're bringing it. The food is brought outside the door. The people bring it in. So it's all social distanced. You bring it in and you enjoy. And it's ex- it's high quality food. It's expensive. But they now expanded from four to 16 rooms. So it became that popular. So it's a matter of you have to be inventive. That's the key thing. You must, must, must be inventive. It is a wonderful website, covidinnovations.com, which you can ah. search for, for wonderful, wonderful inspiration for, 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 for the whole world. Beautiful. How people face the, the problem. So, so, so it's a great source of information, inspiration. And okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, such a, I'm so curious. What does it mean, chief gravity defier? <laughs> so, so chief, the, the basic thing is, is that, um, oh, I don't know, for probably thir- some 30 years or whatever now, you know, right, my whole thing has been about helping brands defy gravity and rise above the noise. And so with the whole thing of, you know, defy gravity and rise above the noise, that's where I basically came with, okay, what's my title? Oh, I'm the chief gravity defier. And so I, that's my job is to really help the brands stand apart, you know, not, not be subject to the same mistakes and be dropped down in terms of value, dropped down in terms of worth. They need to elevate. Everything needs to be elevated. Everything, you know, experience needs to be elevated. Anything that's ordinary. I mean, literally there's not, I would challenge anybody listening to this, anything that you think, write down the things that you think are, are ordinary that just, yeah, you know, it's like ordinary, like for example, and then, and then convert and figure out how to actually convert them into extraordinary. And I'll give you a very specific example. Some years ago, I just did it as a joke, but because when, when phones started to have identification, like, Oh, there's, there's, I knew who the person was. I would answer, I'd say, I'd say, hello, and their name, let's say it's Nancy, let's say, I say, hi, Nancy's dedicated hotline, may I help you? And so, and the person would normally laugh for about a minute, they would crack up. And I was like, I just did it as a little joke. I thought, oh, I thought, oh that's kind of cool, cool. You know, it's like, hey, Nancy's dedicated hotline, you know, who? what's more better, what's better than a dedicated hotline, right? It's like, you're not just like, hi, this is David. That anybody could say, hi, this is David. Anybody can do that. So I was like, how do I make that? So that's literally taking something very simple, very ordinary, and making it extraordinary. Wonderful. So I, I firmly believe that everything, that, that so many more things in a business, like when you give someone, like we've each probably in our, in our careers have gotten amazing business cards, right? Like ones where we stop and go, whoa. You stop and you go, that was amazing. You, you look at it and you, it's thick or it has beautiful texture or it's, you, you, it's like it stops you. What's the value of that, right? So those are, those are the, the things that I look at in terms of how do you convert the ordinary into extraordinary. Wonderful. All right, David. Um, thank you so much for uh, sharing your, uh, your knowledge. And, um, I think it would be great if you um, if you invite um, Polish entrepreneurs, students from the university and, uh, and the marketers to your channels to follow you. Oh yeah! Um, if, if you can do that right now, it would be perfect. Sure. Well, that, I mean, you can certainly certainly connect with me. Uh, LinkedIn is some place I, I hang out quite a bit. Um, uh, my YouTube channel, basically the YouTube channel, uh, Instagram. Uh, but, but I would say link, LinkedIn is a lot of good stuff, but I would definitely invite if, uh, if, um, you, you, especially students and entrepreneurs that are hungry for information, definitely subscribe to my blog and my, my actual website, which is rising, R-I-S-I-N-G, rising above the noise.com. And just and you can go there. You can subscribe. There's a, there's a free ebook that we have that's there as well. But there's well over 300 actual case studies where I show you here's what the company was like before. Here's the problem we found. Here's what it was like after the transformation. So you really get to see. So it's very 
very, very uh, informative, very useful. So that those are the places I would definitely say to reach out for sure. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much. And now you are the part of the uh, Polish uh, branding uh, revolution. <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, David. My pleasure. My pleasure.